I'm connecting up my Quark wireless AIS and GPS receiver. Right here we have the Wi-Fi antenna for uh, so you can connect it to your iPad or your Macintosh computer and I'm going to be demonstrating both. We have an NMEA in and out uh, connector. This comes with it. This is a mini USB connector over here which I have connected up to I have it connected to a USB auxiliary power port type club plug that I've got plugged into the USB port, the mini USB port here. Now this can also be plugged into a computer and you can use that as your data in and out to the computer or you can use Wi-Fi which is what I'll be demonstrating today. also need an AIS antenna. I'm just using a, a relatively inexpensive uh, whip style antenna uh, for now just for testing purposes and you also need a GPS antenna. On the left is the little GPS hockey puck style antenna. It's an active GPS antenna and then just this little whip style VHF antenna. The following is going to show you how to connect your iPad to the Quark Wi-Fi. The first thing you have to do is in settings connect your Wi-Fi to the Quark Wi-Fi. Then launch iNavX and open up the TCP IP settings. To do that you have to tap the instruments item in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Then tap uh, TCP IP uh, in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Uh, you will set your host and port to the, the numbers there and toggle the link to on. You should see a stream of NMEA data in the console below. And then when you move back to charts, you'll see the AIS data. You can move to the uh, AIS target list view and get more information about the targets there. It's a similar process to set your Macintosh to use the Quark. First of all, you connect the Wi-Fi of the Macintosh computer to the Quark AIS uh, Wi-Fi signal. Then you launch Mac ENC, and you're going to connect to the TCP IP. The IP address and the port are the same we used before for the iPad. We'll then connect the GPS using the IP only protocol. You should have a green dot there that indicates that you've got a good signal. For the AIS connection we're going to use the GPS port. And as I hide some of these things just a little bit so we can see, uh, you can see the AIS targets on the chart. Um, you can see in the AIS connection window uh, the AIS targets listed. Uh, you can click on one of the targets there in the list and then click on get more info the, or the information button there in the window and it'll give you more information about uh, the target that you're, you're looking at. Uh, since this has just started up, it hasn't had enough time to uh, provide the names, but uh, after about five minutes at the most, uh, the targets uh, should have uh, names of the vessels provided there instead of just their MMSI numbers. Uh, 
I also wanted to set up my Quark AIS and GPS with my chart plotter. I have a Garmin GPS Map 3206. It's an old model. Uh, I have here the Quark AIS GPS receiver. Here's the antenna sign. And on uh, what I needed to do was I needed to find the correct wire pair for NMEA data to be uh, sent from the AIS receiver to my chart plotter. On my model, uh, those were the brown and the blue wires in the uh, power and data bundle that goes to the back of the chart plotter. To set the Garmin up to receive AIS data, you have to adjust the menu in the setup and the first thing you have to do is make sure that in system you have a NMEA high-speed COM port. That was the port that goes uh, to the blue and brown wires. Then you can see on the map setup page you have AIS now is available as a tab. You can uh, set vessels to be viewed either auto, all ranges, off, greater than 30 feet, and so on. I set mine to auto. Uh, the heading line is set to time. It can be set to time or off. And the time frame I chose was 20 minutes so I could see about where the uh, targets will be 20 minutes from now. Once all that's entered, you can see that AIS targets appear on the screen. In this case, it's picking up uh, barges that are out in the intercoastal waterway close to where um, I keep my boat. One of the cool things about this is that even with it connected to my chart plotter at the helm, I can still have it transmitting Wi-Fi data to my iPad.